How are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and today I want to talk to you about setting up light traps in order to attract insects and invertebrates at night for your enjoyment or photography. Needless to say, years ago I used to just grab a couple extension cords, plug them into the house we used to live in, um, and then grab my ultraviolet light, my full spectrum fluorescent light for my fish and stuff, and just aim them at the side of the house, you know? And that would attract tons of insects and stuff at night. It was really cool. When I'm camping, what do I do then? Well, I'm going to talk to you about that. Let's get this video started. Should be a lot of fun. Okay, so first things first. You're going to need some kind of source for the insects to land on, whether it's the side of your house or, you know, a sheet. In this case, it's a, a curtain that I bought for like $4 at Walmart. And I just grabbed some rope, tied it between two trees, and then suspended the curtain from it. I've noticed different fabrics or different materials and different colors might have a different impact on things. Some of them reflect light, which attract more insects. Some of them provide a good surface for them to walk on. You know, paper doesn't work very well because they just kind of land on it and slide down. So something I like to do when I'm setting up the sheet is actually anchor the bottom so that the sheet is on an angle. That allows an easier viewing surface for me, but I actually believe that gives better exposure to insects that might be flying by out in the distance. You know, if it's straight up and down like this, they might not see it, but if they're flying by overhead, they have a better chance of seeing that reflecting light if it's on an angle. Of course, I anchor it because you got a good wind and breeze and stuff. So that's always something I do if, if I'm setting up a sheet Everybody's different. It's up to you. As far as lights are concerned, you know, just improvise with what you have. I do find the LEDs don't always work that good at attracting anything unless it's an ultraviolet. I bought this bright spectrum, you know, fluorescent lamp from Target. It cost me $12 and it's actually, I believe this is 5200 Kelvin as far as the t color temperature is concerned. So it makes it a bit more of a, a bluish light where if you're using like 3000 you know it's going to look different okay again it depends on what's available how much money you want to spend and you know whatever you want to do experiment with it this thing has worked okay for me in the past still i really like using those giant fluorescent tube lamps and they're pretty cheap my favorite thing to use are those stereotypical ultraviolet black lights that you would find in Spencer's or you know clubs and Halloween stores and all that cool stuff those attract tons of insects and uh, you know even if you have one plugged in in your bedroom at night you would have all these insects bouncing off the window I ordered this UV because I wanted something that I could throw maybe in a bag and carry it with me without breaking it and it's just a, a little electronic ultraviolet light Although it's got those microchip looking, you know, bulbs in it. I don't really like those because one, they're not always the most reliable. They stop working for no reason. And two, I'm not entirely sure if it attracts as many insects as the fluorescent or tube lights do, you know. Even the, the, the tube light ultraviolets seem to attract a ton of stuff. But this isn't bad. Barely weighs anything. Doesn't cost much at all. Um... You know, I was looking at the receipt, twelve ninety nine is what I paid after taxes. It came to fourteen something, so uh, not bad. I'm camping. I'm in the middle of uh, the forest. So how do I power these things? This is what I use out here. This is a portable power generator. I like to just call it a battery because that's what it is, or, or a power bank of some sort, and it's made by Progeny. Um, obviously I looked for one that has AC outlets you got to make sure it has those most of them have two of them but some of them don't last very long or they overheat and then they shut off every 10 minutes I wanted something that would stay lit for a long time obviously to attract the insects what's useful is almost all of them have this little built-in light right here and uh, so I can turn that on at the same time that I have something else plugged in that's really useful so I have two different you know, sources of light to attract all the insects. These are very useful. 
of course you can always plug stuff into the AC or the, the adapters for your vehicles or even turn on your headlights and aim them you know at something but I don't like doing that I don't like running power from a vehicle unless I'm driving somewhere you know last thing you want to do is go to turn on your vehicle and it doesn't start I've used those little electronic lanterns uh, the ones that have like the the foil looking cones inside them to reflect light uh, or the LED ones they just don't attract anything for me when I'm using the old school bulb ones or the ones with the little fluorescent you know bulb in them or the you know the vapor tubes those work really well speaking of lights the the best ones seem to be the mercury vapors but there's you know there's a couple of pros and cons pros they attract tons of insects and they could be seen for forever away right the cons well unfortunately they cost a lot of money and these things get super super warm in fact I used to have uh, those mercury vapor lamps at the studio I worked at and if you had to change bulbs for anything you had to wear gloves you know before you handled them because you get the oils from your your skin would stick to the bulbs and then later on when you turned on the bulb that stuff would heat up boil and explode the bulb those bulbs can be hundred and twenty dollars so yeah mercury vapor works wonders cost a fortune it gets really hot and you know they're fragile bring a few little containers would you you know, throw them in your backpack I like to rush and dowel them you know stick them all inside each other and that way if I see something really cool and I got to grab a different lens or something I could just put it in the container real quick while I'm doing that kind of stuff of course you want to make sure you don't harm the animals don't hurt them make sure the containers are big enough if it's a moth or butterfly you don't really want to do that because they can damage their wings but things like this work really good for of course moths and butterflies I paid ten dollars for this on Amazon of course and this is great for anything that flies around because if it bounces into the walls it doesn't get hurt you know plus it looks real cool people walk by and they're like he's a professional he's a scientist and then they find out no he's just this really nerdy person alone playing with insects yeah I want to talk to you about another really useful tool for exploring insects and entomology these things here the, these are called books I love these look they, they smell awesome especially if you find them in like an old library or used ones they got this really cool smell it almost reminds you of like insects and spiders and stuff but uh, the Kaufman guides you know find one for your area obviously I've got the North American ones but I've got either mid-Atlantic or the northeastern states those are really useful they're just kind of a general field guide it's not going to cover everything just a little bit of each group or maybe just the main groups of insects and vertebrates you might run into some books organize things by looks you know all your little round yellowy orange beetles will be in this section uh, other books will organize it according to species all sorts of things these uh, Peterson guides you can never go wrong with Peterson Peterson is very reliable really good information great diagrams and images but the field guide to moths this thing is like you know a Bible almost now speaking of Bibles this thing right here in my area the Beatles of Eastern North America I'm in love with this book you know I find stuff and then you try to look it up online and you just can't find it you know or you find something that's related this book often has what you're looking for and then it talks a little bit about it but it's just really nice to know what you're talking about or what you're photographing um, you know it's like a hobby I just love the books and of course having a camera to me is like paramount if, if anything I want something to find insects in you know like again setting up the the lights near meadows and stuff is really good setting them up near sources of water you know ponds swamps lakes those are great locations for the light traps just really good spots and of course like I said meadows are wonderful locations 
if I had only one tool, um, it wouldn't even be the the light traps or a sheet or anything like that. It would probably just be a you know a flashlight to wear around my head and a camera. Because when I get excited, I want to you know share stuff with people. When I find something cool, I want to show people. And if I don't have a camera, I almost don't even want to find anything. Because for me, it's all about saying, "Hey, look at this." This lives around here, you know? Let's go look for these things. I just love sharing the excitement. But uh, books are a great resource. They're a great tool. Journals are really useful. But mainly, if you want to set up a light trap, just grab yourself some kind of sheet. Um, any kind of lights, lanterns. In this case, I use the, you know, this portable power generator and a fluorescent light, a little black light. And I bring my camera with me. It's real simple. Sorry I'm talking a lot, but you know I get asked a lot of questions and those are some good answers. So I'm gonna wait for the sun to go down and turn on my lights and see if anything shows up. Last night was a bust. I barely found anything, I don't know why. Um, I walked all the way down to where the bathrooms are because there's always stuff attracted to those lamps at night. In fact, when I go camping, I'm the guy with the camera standing at the bathrooms creeping everybody out at two in the morning but no I'm, I'm just looking for insects i swear and i could show them on my cameras but i did find some cool stuff in the end so let's wait a little while and i'll turn this on and see what we've got so i've had the lights set up for about an hour and I keep alternating but there's a storm rolling in so I'm gonna have to pack this up and I'll try to show you um, some of the things I found it's not really an active night you know I just found some stuff but I did find a couple of things for the first time actually these tiny little moths are are new to me so that's fun <laughs> Now that's some kind of leaf-footed bug. There's actually some around here that are way bigger than that. Um, probably about two and a half times that size. That's a Hebrew moth. Pretty easy to tell because their designs look like Hebrew. Something just landed behind me. This is an oak borer. Another favorite of mine. Whenever I can, I try to move the insects to a better background like this. Just so they don't wind up backlit by the sheet. Sometimes there's no choice. This is a... I didn't expect to see a hair streak here tonight. Check out this cool guy. This is an ivy spotted borer, and I really like them, although some people find them to be pests. This cool looking guy is a white streak prominent. I really like these, especially if you look at their legs. Not finding a whole lot of stuff tonight, but whatever this is, it's pretty cool looking. So this is uh, one of the giant caddisflies, and I think this might be the biggest species in our area. I'm not too sure. No idea what this is, but it's pretty cool.
Okay, so that's about it for the light trap video. And, you know, the moon was shining so bright that it actually kept the navigating invertebrates at night on track. You know, they use the moon to navigate and they keep it in a fixed position the whole time. You know, let's just say over your right shoulder. And since the moon is so far away, it's kind of like in a fixed point, right? And light bulbs are way closer. So they think that those are the moon and they try to keep them over the right shoulder. But as they fly by, you know, they're passing it. So they keep orientating themselves so that it's at the same point. That's what caused them to go into circles and stuff and land by the light. Now, it was still pretty exciting. I did find some good stuff. It rained all of last night, so I couldn't really set anything up. But the night before, found some cool stuff. Not what I expected, but again, bright moon. I definitely recommend you experiment with different types of lights, different colors, and different times of the evening. And also, elevate your lights. Have them like three or four feet off the ground for kind of like the best results. Whenever I put them on the ground, I barely get anything. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.